we're going through Genesis chapter 39. Um, Genesis 39 literally returns from the describing scandalous family, history of Judah in chapter 38. 38 ended when we'd seen Judah, how he ended up sleeping with his own daughter-in-law, Tamar, you know, and he ended up having twins with her. What an interesting, devastating story, uh, which ended up with quite interesting, you know, twist towards the end. Here, um, however, the scripture resumes a focus on Joseph. Earlier on, we had seen Joseph being sold to Egypt when he had been sold to, you know, to the to the Shemites, uh, to the Ishmaels and the Midianites, you know, slave traders who were heading down to Egypt and then he was sold for 20 pieces of silver by his own brothers. And then, you know, 39, we saw the Bible sort of focused yet on Judah. Now we are getting back on Joseph, who had actually been sold into slavery in Egypt. Now, Joseph had been purchased by a very powerful Egyptian official uh, who also was called the captain of the guard. Much as Joseph is no longer, you know, in the promised land or with his own family, the Lord was still with Joseph. In fact, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. He was never once, he was never once abandoned by God. I could literally say the same about me. Potiphar, Joseph's master, soon saw that Joseph was successful in everything that he did. And therefore, he installed Joseph to be one of the heads of his own family. In fact, the one we shall see that he headed each and everything except for the food that Potiphar had. Not only was the Hebrew slave hard worker, and a man of integrity, ooh, he was also a blessed man. He was blessed by his Hebrew God. As a result, everything that Joseph did and everything that he held with his own hands, God blessed it. They all thrived. Potiphar's household, apparently, it, you know, apparently grew in wealth and in well-being. And Joseph's God was given all the credit and all the glory. This was about the best outcome Joseph could have hoped for as a slave in Egypt. However, a complication arose. Like his mother, Rachel, mm, he was hot. Joseph was blessed with exceptional good looks. He was extremely attractive. <laughs> Soon, Potiphar's wife, noticed him and so he decided sorry she decided to seduce him or rather you know she will try to so one day she commanded joseph to lie with her perhaps she made a regular practice of sleeping with her husband's slaves who knows probably this has been not going oh yes i'll give you some bit of insight in the full edition uh you know potiphar was an image i'll give you some bit of details there why this is very likely what actually happened. But hey, stay tuned. Oh, if you haven't watched the full episode, please pick it up on our YouTube channel. So nonetheless, Joseph knew he was in a terrible position. Given any other command, he would be compelled to obey his master's wife. Yet he knew that sleeping with her would be a clear crystal betrayal of the extraordinary trust that Potiphar had actually put in him. So Joseph refused his master's wife, carefully explaining that he cannot betray his master, Potiphar. More importantly, that he would actually not sin against God. That is key. He said he will not sin against God. We sin. Whenever we commit adultery, every time we sin, we're actually sinning against God, not necessarily against our own men. And that's probably because at the time, for them, it was normal, it was acceptable. But as far as Joseph is concerned, there was a sin against God himself. So Potiphar's wife would not take a no for an answer. She continued to attempt to seduce Joseph. He co uh, she coerced Joseph into bed with her. She did everything she could on a daily basis. However, Joseph continually refused. So one day, when no other men were in the house, she grabbed him by the clock and demanded once more that Joseph would sleep with her. Instead of arguing, hmm, 
Joseph twisted her around about his cloak and he escaped outside of the house for safety. It was one way he could avoid both the temptation and the appearance of immorality. He literally ran away rather than be accused of something that was improper. Potiphar's wife was so furious. While she held Joseph's cloak, her lust was converted into rage and quest for revenge. She called to her, you know, to the other male servants that were in the house, sort of assistance, and told them, Joseph attempted to rape me, and therefore he is there running away. <laughs> and, 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 and so I screamed, and then he decided to run away. And unfortunately, they seemed to have believed her. Well, they likely, I mean, they saw Joseph running away from the house and, you know, without the cloak. I'm not sure they had anything on underneath there, but hey, <laughs> you know, so probably they believed uh, the lady. Uh, her clever lies, unfortunately, played, a, played on the other servants' resentments of Joseph's success and as well as his race. Potiphar, as his wife hoped, was engraved by her story. In his hunger, he had Joseph thrown into jail for the king's prisoners. Interestingly, her reaction was, strange, was strangely subdued because Potiphar had the right to kill Joseph outright. It is possible, however, that Joseph's reputation for honesty and a potentially unfaithful history in Potiphar's wife sort of softened his reaction just enough to keep him alive in the prison. It was not fair, of course, on Joseph being falsely accused and imprisoned, but uh, I guess that's life. It would be natural, uh, you know, to expect him to thank, to think he had got, he had lost God's blessings because he has been, you know, thrown in prison. However, Scripture is quick to answer us and assure that the Lord was still with Joseph even while he was in prison. Even more, God showed Joseph his steadfast love. Though Joseph languished in Egyptian prison for a crime he did not commit. He had not been abandoned by Jehovah. As evidence of this fact, God caused the king's jailer to be impressed with Joseph's work, ethic, integrity, and success. Soon, Joseph was given charge of nearly all the cities, uh, all the sorry, all the duties in prison, much as he'd been in Potiphar's house, uh, much as you know. Uh, much as he had been in Potiphar's house. So because of the Lord's blessing upon Joseph, everything Joseph did succeeded. It succeeded while he was in Potiphar's house. It still succeeded while he was in prison. There's something beautiful to learn from there. You know, prosperity that comes from the Lord does not necessarily depend upon the location of your place. It doesn't depend on where you are. You can be prospered wherever you are. Amen? God prospered Joseph while he was in Potiphar's house. God has prospered Joseph while he's in the king's prison. Soon, this combination of divine blessings, work, ethic, and success brought Joseph onto the attention of the king of Egypt, who was also called Pharaoh himself. And we'll start about that in verses uh, in chapter 40, that is the next episode, verses 9 to 14. That's it, basically, uh, the summary of Genesis chapter 39. To watch the full edition of this, the full episode, please log on to our website, that is www.abdiministries.org. You could as well scan the QR code that is on your screen to get on to our YouTube channel, or you can also search for the scandal, for the handle Abdi Ministries. We also have a channel on uh, Spotify. Yep, you can also find full audio episodes right there. Same for TikTok and Facebook. 
Otherwise, thank you, and please ensure you watch the full edition.